Any patient with a chronic, particularly monoarticular swelling, uh, does require examination as well as the history, history, examination. This gentleman says that the disease is with him for the last few years, but he's more symptomatic for the last about one year. Yes, sir. And when we look at him, he is able to walk, but with great difficulty, with a stick in his hands. Having completed the history, we are on the examination. Obviously, the first examination is in fact inspection, and one can see an obvious wasting of the diseased side as compared to the normal side. And most of the wasting takes place in the muscles and vastus medialis is one muscle which is not covered by any thick structure like iliotibial tract on the lateral side. Wasting probably takes place in all the muscles but the one which is maximally appreciated by a clinician is the vastus medialis. One can see is almost like a hollow area of vastus medialis near the knee joint vis vis the vastus medialis on the normal side. There is some wasting on the all around the knee joint, but maximum which we can appreciate is on the middle side, especially in diseases of short duration. That is the area which should be inspected more carefully. Having done inspection, then one can start palpating. In palpation, again the same thing. Is the part warmer than the opposite side? Is it only slightly warm or it is very high warm, again all the time comparing with the opposite side and if we touch it with the back of the fingers, it is warm as compared to the normal side. The temperature is raised but not too high a temperature. Then when we again when we start touching the patient, feel if he is tender. I am pressing him fairly hard, he does not wince. In acute infections, he will wince terribly, he will not permit me that much pressure. But here, if I apply too much of pressure, even then he is not wincing. Now that is the character of chronic infections are tuberculosis of the knee joint, even rheumatoid conditions or other uh, uh, other, other inflammatory conditions would produce tenderness but not that severe as would happen in a septic arthritis or pyogenic arthritis. And when we are palpating, we compare, come, come from the normal area to the diseased area and one can feel that there is a smooth swelling which looks like the swelling of the soft tissue, which means the synovium, vis-a-vis -vis the opposite side. It is the synovium that is predominantly thickened. And once you are on the synovium, one palpates it from above downwards. One can actually feel the border. If I were feeling, I would probably put a mark here that here is the maximum swelling or the swelling has extended up to this place, which means the swelling is involving not only the contents of the knee joint but also in the suprapatellar pouch. Again, every time you compare it with the opposite side. Again, you can see on the medial side of the knee joint, in a normal side, you can see a small depression medial on the medial side almost behind the patella. Here, that retropatellar fossa on the medial side is filled up as compared to the opposite side. No. We are talking about this area on the normal side, the left side of the patient compared to the disease side, the right side of the patient. We are talking about this area, the comparison. Sir. This is practically flat, whereas this is swollen. Again, uh, you can appreciate the swelling here again, vis-a-vis -vis the lateral side because here the synovium is covered only by the vastus medialis which remains muscular right up to the lower end.
Now, we are also seeing on inspection, we are also seeing some ulcers on the lateral side, which is distal to the knee joint. Also, some ulcers on the medial side, which are medial to the knee joint. If you look at these ulcers, they look flat ulcers. At some place, we can see the granulation tissue, which is almost reddish, but at some places, one can see small amount of pus or pustules. And this patient is showing a serous discharge coming out of these ulcers. Serous discharge is usually characteristic of tuberculous infections, whereas pyogenic in a pyogenic infection, the discharge would be like pus. This is also a pus, but the pus of the tuberculous nature is many a time serious in discharge rather than looking purulent or thick. One can see the discharge coming out of it. Same thing is happening on the lateral side. Even here we can see an ulcer covered with pale granulation tissue. At some place there is a small pustule, but appears that the borders of the ulcer, they are flat. They are flattened. The granulation tissue is not protruding out or pouting and this practically is a typical a typical ulcer of tuberculous nature. Uh, when you move the skin around it, one can actually think that probably they are undermined and when you move again you can see the discharge coming out of it which is serious in nature. However, in examination you want to be more sure, you can have a small probe to go around, go under the lips of this ulcer, you can see that they are undermined edges. Nice to use a small blunt um, periosteum elevator or any blunt tissue or a blunt dissector which you can insert on the sides of the ulcer and you can see that it, whenever a patient presents with a sinus, we should look at the sinus or the ulcers. In reality, most of the ulcers are uh, the termination of a sinus or penetration of the sinus out on the skin. In a country like ours, whenever we see a flat ulcer, start thinking, could it be tuberculosis? And certain characters of the ulcer are a flattened ulcer, thin ulcer, pigmented ulcer showing serous discharge and if you probe it gently you can see that many of these ulcers are undermined edges. I am pushing in a blunt instrument under the ulcer, ulcer margins and one can see almost I can push in almost like 2 centimeter inside. This is very classical of an undermined ulcer undermine margins of an ulcer and probably in this particular patient my probe is almost entering into some sinus. So this is a very typical undermined ulcer present in a patient in whom we are suspecting that this could be tuberculosis in nature. Having done that you can also see the discharge coming out of this ulcer. The discharge coming out of the ulcer is almost like a serous discharge. And serious discharge again is characteristic of tuberculous infections. In pyogenic infections, of course, you will find a permanent discharge. However, even in tuberculosis, you can have a mixture of serous and permanent discharge because once a secondary infection takes place, the discharge from an ulcer can be permanent as well. Granulation tissue? The granulation tissue in tuberculous ulcers are flat. They are reddish all right but they are pale red. In a pyogenic infection the granulation tissue is red and generally they pout out of the they pout out of the ulcer. They just protrude protrude out of the ulcer. We call them protruding or pouting granulation tissue. These are you know common things but there are so many variations available for many reasons.